So I've brought you to the amazing Lindome Lakes today to show you one of my favourite types of fishing at this time of year. I absolutely love it when it starts to warm up a little bit. I've got my jumper on, don't have to have my coat on anymore, a little bit warmer. Fish are definitely starting to get more active and I can tell that because when I go out on a few of these feature days, the fish don't swim away, they come to wherever we are, they come to the bait and they're looking for food, which is great. And it means I can do one of what I believe is the simplest ways fishing, a really easy ways fishing, but gets me thinking all day. Like I'm always thinking about what I'm doing, what I'm feeding and trying to get the best out of it. But to do it and actually sit here is so easy to do. And it's based around pellets. And of course we know pellets are the staple bait on every commercial. You won't go any commercial that pellets aren't the bait that gets chucked in more than anything. So the fish know them, they love them. And this is gonna be about just trying to get the best out of it for you guys, trying to catch the most fish that you can. So before we do anything with rigs, sat on a nice peg today on Willow Lake, and I'm just gonna show you how I'm gonna prepare the bait and then get out and do a little bit of fishing. First of all, got the fishery pellets. Um, today's gonna to be revolve around soft pellets and then moving to hard, transitioning to hard pellets and almost trying to judge when and where that needs to happen. On this lake that I'm on today, I've had it in the past where literally I can't even put a soft pellet on. There's loads of small skimmers and roach and I need to fish with hard pellets. But ultimately, soft pellets are the best way to get the fish really going at this time of year. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's an easier meal or what it, I don't know why, but I just always find that soft pellet approach works really well and then like almost like switching a light, hard pellets become the king. And sometimes that can happen in the same day, almost like the water warms up, the fish start feeding a bit more in the afternoon and you need to change to hard pellets. So that's what we're gonna look at today. We've got some fishery pellets here. I'm just gonna cut the bag open. These are the two mils. I'm just gonna show you how I'm preparing for soft pellet fishing on the pole. Not method fishing or anything with these today. This is literally just gonna be for fishing out in front. So going to do probably like half a pint to start with don't need to do loads now I always like to do something to get my fishery pellets to stand out slightly we've done videos on this in the past got with me some banoffee haze like the pineapple and coconut scopex basically anything that's yellow and sweet I love it so banoffee great literally going to squirt this in into the micros look good glug in there all right haven't haven't been stingy and then I'm going to add the water and unlike when you're doing it um, micros for like method or anything like that, I need these to be properly covered. So I'm just gonna give that lava a bit of a, that haze, sorry, a bit of a stir around. Really stir that round there. And look, those pellets are completely submerged, all right? I've completely submerged those pellets. There's not like loads of excess water on there, but they'll probably blow up a little bit too much or go a bit too sticky for say method fishing but hopefully they're gonna blow right up and be nice and yellow, nice and visible and sweet for feeding on my pole. So that's the first thing that I'm gonna do when I get to my peg, pop them down there so they're ready to go. Next, I need a few hard pellets. So I'm gonna get the, the fishery four mils here, my scissors, and I'm gonna do the same. Literally, you don't wanna put loads in. Oh, I'm gonna say half a pint. And there's enough bait in those two tubs today to probably catch me a hundred pound of F1s and carp. Because even though they're starting to look for bait, they're not ready yet for like three, four, five pints of pellets. It's not that time of year. So it couldn't get any easier. A few hard four mils, got the soft two, two mils. I can always ban the hard four mils on the hook, but I also need some softer pellet options for the hook as well. And that's where the pro expanders come in. So I've got my little clip lock tub and I've prepared these. I'm gonna show you how I prepare these right now. You can see there, I've used it, made them nice and yellow again. I've got six and four mils mixed together and I'm gonna show you how I prepare them. So I'm gonna put them in my bait tub there. They're ready to go as my hook pellets all day. Absolutely perfect. Nice little selection there of pellets, dead easy. So let's show you how I prepare those pro expanders because pro expanders, Keep them in a bag like this so they don't dry out. First of all, some six mils. You can see I've been using those a while, haven't I, hey? 
just keep pouring a few out every single time. So probably like, I don't know, 100, 150, because I, I want a nice, nice selection of six mil pellets. Get the four mils, do the same. A few more, I would have thought. There you go, it looks about right to me. Pop these back in the bag. You don't want these pellets to, to dry out. You want to try and keep them in good condition. So I just literally pop them in a bag, roll them down like that, keep them in my garage so they're ready to go. And now what I want to do is, again, I want to make them nice and bright. If you look at the difference in colour between the ones that I prepared and these ones here in the tub, you can see there's a definite standout. So you imagine fish swimming around a foot off bottom, they're going to see that bait, they're going to see my hook bait really easily. I want to do that, I want a brighter bait. So again, I just use the haze, literally give a good old squirt in there. You can't overdo it, get plenty in there. And then I just pour some water in to this tub and you want all the pellets over covered, look. So like, look, there's twice as much water in there as there is pellets. These are pro expanders. You, you, you almost can't go wrong. You could fill that tub with water if you wanted to, but that's what I like to do. Put it in my little clip lock. Give it a proper shake. Look at that. Bright yellow, the water in there and I put those in the fridge last night. So I literally did that about seven o'clock yesterday, popped them in the fridge last night, and you have seen me open those up this morning, and I've got nice six and four mil options, big, visible, bright hook baits, really absolutely perfect. So it couldn't be any easier. I've got a tin of corn with me, I always bring a tin of corn, sometimes it's a bit windy, sometimes I want something a little bit big and hard, I actually won't even open this because I'm not going to feed any. I won't open this unless I think to myself, do you know what? I need to try a piece of corn. Corn's a hook bait option. Sometimes you can flick a few bits down the side or something like that, but I'd always bring it with me, but I'm not going to open it today. I just want to focus on pellets. So wrap those up, put them down there. You can see it's really straightforward. And this is, this is why I was sort of wanted to get on the fact that it's going to be a really easy day because I don't want to, I don't want to overcomplicate things. I don't want to make things difficult for myself because the fish eat these baits. They eat the hard pellets, they eat the soft pellets and they, they're going to eat my hook bait. So I don't need to overcomplicate it and I don't need large amounts of bait. I then want to pick where I'm going to fish. Now, you can fish at any distance to suit you. I don't want to dwell too much today on where to fish because this isn't about that i believe on a lot of commercials this lake is exactly the same i've got an open water peg today the fish aren't quite ready for the margins yet so they're going to be anywhere in the sort of main depth of the lake and the main depth on this lake is from about three meters out so i don't want to be fishing like five six meters because cameraman's here walking about there might be a few people coming to chat to me I might be in a match and there's some pressure on it so I'm just going to fish a little bit further out and you'll be amazed that the fish early doors they just sit that bit further out in the lake they'll sit like 10 11 12 meters something like that so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to start about 12 meters um, and take it dead steady but my rig is super easy so this is my go-to pellet rig. I literally have these tied up in my box, ready to go at all times. We'll start at the top end, shall we? I'm expecting F1s with a chance of a carp. So I've got some 11 Dura slip there. Nice for giving elastic, dead easy to do, little Dacron connector there to connect it. Got my pot on my pole, my little sprinkle pot there. So I'm gonna show you how we're gonna feed in a minute. I've got an 018 main line. I've made the step up from um, the winter when I was fishing like 014 main lines. Now I'm on 018 main lines. That means I can put any hook length on from 010 all the way up to 018 if I want to. And you can see there I've got about 12 inches between float tip and uh, elastic. And I've put two number eights at third points. If you're gonna do one thing with your pellet fishing rigs, that is what I recommend. Because I don't want to have a really short length of line between pole tip and float because I'm fishing 12 meters, but I want to be in control of the float at all times. Well, if this shot here is four inches away from the float, that means that this shot is the one that I need to be in control of at all times, otherwise it will affect the float. 
which means effectively I'm tight to the float at all times. So those two number eight stops there, if, if, if you do anything on your rigs, that's, that's what I would recommend. I've got a 414s F1 pellet, absolutely cracking float, black the tip out just so I can see it, hollow bristle, one and a half mil hollow bristle, nickel titanium stem, nice and stable. It's probably five foot deep here today, so I've got a 414s, seems a logical choice to me. You could probably get away with a 412s, but it's a little bit windy, and I don't think it makes a huge difference, 414s, 412s, when you're fishing like five, six foot. Um, if it was shallower, I'd get away with a, with a lighter float. And then down the rig, literally six inches away from the top of the hook length, I have got some number nines, uh, the number nines, number tens, number tens. Got some number 10s there at one inch intervals. So you can see I've got one, two, three, five, six, seven number 10s there. He says number 10s could be number nines, not even sure myself that long ago since I made the rig up. Put it this way, not big shot. There's literally nines or tens, depending on the size of your float. If it's four 16s, probably nines. If it was four 12s, probably tens. I think these are nines. But you can see, look, the idea is a nice tight bulk. Nothing too fancy. I haven't put them all together on top of the hook length. You could do, but all I like to do with that, don't forget, this isn't a slow fall. This is just about keeping all my rig nice and tight. So this shot like this keeps all the line nice and tight all the way down. I've got a six inch hook length, 012 to a 14 SFL. Now, the reason I've got such a, some of you might think that's a big hook for pellet fishing, but one thing pellet fishing has taught me over the years when I'm fishing expanders is there's absolutely nothing to be gained at all from having a small hook like a 16 or an 18. For me, an expander itself is a light hook bait, so it counteracts the weight of the hook. So if I put a 4 mil, if I just get one of these 4 mil pellets and I'm going to roll it on, and I shall hold it up for you guys, you can see once it's rolled on, the hook is completely covered, right? So they're not gonna see the hook, but it means I've got the hook point showing and I'm gonna miss less bites. When I'm fishing hard pellets, I'll be hair rigging them with a band. So I will change my hook length to put an 18 and a banded uh, pellet on. And the reason I need to fish a smaller hook is because the hook is completely exposed. The pellet is a hard pellet, it's heavy already. And without a doubt, a smaller hook gets you more bites with a hard hair rigged pellet. But when you're fishing a soft pellet, literally you can hook that on like that and it's absolutely perfect. So dead easy to do, no problems whatsoever. So there's my rig, really simple. One last thing that I always bring with me that I wanted to mention to you is a little bit of ground bait. Now, ground bait for me is the ultimate attractor. All right, nothing is more attractive than to fish because it's a super fine particle. I've got some Thatcher's Dark. You could use Thatcher's Natural, F1 Original, Crushed Expander. A lot of the Sony baits, ground baits, have got Crushed Expander in them mixed with something else. This one, Thatcher's Dark, is really, really smelly. It's got a higher oil and a higher fish meal added to it, so it really smells. And that's great because I am talking about using literally hardly any. So I'm going to put that down there, put some water in it. And again, I'm really going to over wet this. All right. I'm just going to literally make it complete soup. That is complete runny soup, look. And that will stodge up over the next 10 minutes or so. And it's a brilliant way of attracting fish into the peg. I'm going to talk about the feeding in a minute, but having that as an option is something that I wouldn't go fishing without, but it's only there if I need it. We'll talk about that and touch on that in a minute. I think we should get out into the peg, have a little look at some feeding, how we can get the best out of these brilliant baits. Right, I can't wait to get started. Um, I've plumbed up the rig, so it's, it's, the water's level with the bottom of the float. 
it's probably like and i mean right at the bottom so it's probably you imagine my float shot to there I've got like an inch of line from almost give which in my head really with the water and the movement is pretty much hanging dead depth and tight what i don't want to do is plumb it up to like there on the bristle because unless my pellet pulls the float under then it's not going to be quite right it just feels to me like you need that little bit of give so always plumb up to the bottom of the body of the float nice heavy plummet when you do it i use the 30 gram plummet there dead easy to use nice and heavy donked it around looks good now i want to get started and i've got these baits here here's the ground bait look it's gone nice and solid absolutely perfect nice wet damp lovely mix that's the most attractive thing i've got on my side tray then i've got my micros they're the next attractive then i've got my hard pellets and that's how i want you to think about it so you've got like three different types of bait that are all different in their powers of attraction but sometimes it's harder to catch fish over finer baits than it is harder baits. so you need to like almost get a balance you don't just pick up your most attractive thing first because there is no need we want to see what's there we want to see if we can catch so i'm going to get my pellets here and i'm going to hook a four mil expander on just how i did earlier roll him on there he is ready to go and in my pot i've got a little sprinkle lid on my pot today just going to get honestly like 25 or so micros no more than that just pop them into the pot there you go don't, not going to push them down or anything like that i want to just shake them out over probably the size of like that bait towel there just going to shake a few micros i was i used to be really big on shape, putting my bait on one hole and being ridiculously accurate but i've learned over time that the trouble with that is that you don't end up being as accurate so just giving myself a little bit of a bigger area to fish over almost like two bait tubs if you like just means that i've got the bait a little bit more spread out just take my time shipping out don't want to spill any of those pellets so right on the end of my pole just going to before i even concentrate on the ring just going to turn the pot over probably about a foot off the water look just bang them out like that and then lift my pellet right out now I don't want to lower it down to the side. I want everything to come down nice and straight. So I'm almost going to just, you imagine those micros are still sinking. They're still sinking. They're going to take a while to sink. They're probably getting to the bottom about now, I would say. Maybe not. I don't want my pellet to go down with the micros. I actually want my pellet to come down just after them, almost like it's the last thing anything sees. Because in my head, if my pellet comes down with the other pellets it's almost like the fish aren't going to spot it from a different pellet i like the i like my pellet to almost fall like the last pellet to fall does that make sense you can imagine the the rain of micros coming down and then almost like two or three seconds behind almost like one that got left behind my pellet coming down behind so hopefully if any fish are there or seeing it oh there we go <laughs> brilliant wasn't expecting that um if any fish are there they see my pellet quickly and it goes under do you know what sun's shining the elastic's coming out of the pole what a great start that looked like a big skimmer that looked like a big skimmer i think it is now i've been doing a lot of skimmer fishing all winter to be fair that is a big skimmer Look at that, didn't know they were in here. Maybe all those little skimmers that I was talking about have grown up. Great stamp fish, good two pound ears. Look at that, what a brilliant start. So, there we go, look. That skimmer's obviously been in the area. He's seen those micros come down. And this is what I was talking about. Obviously, if we get almost plagued by that, I wouldn't be bothered being plagued by them, to be honest, because I catch a right weight, but if we almost get plagued by them, that's where I'm going to have to think about changing to hard pellets. But look how easy that was to get a bite, how quick it was to get a bite. That's, that's blown my mind, to be honest. So I'm going to do the same again. I found in the silverfish matches that I fished, you know, up until a, only a couple of weeks ago, what's happened a lot of the time is 
we haven't had problems with um, we haven't had problems with carp and F1s really. You might get an odd and early, and then the last hour, hour and a half, it's like carp and F1s feeding really heavy. So it kind of makes sense to catch a few silverfish first. If they're there, let's catch them. I'm just going to do exactly the same. I'm going to put 25 micros in that pot. You know, if those fish are there, if those two pound skimmers, <laughs> bream if you want he was nice he was a dark brown color if those fish are there and they want to feed then i want to catch them and it might just be that the f1s take a little bit of persuading to come into the peg hopefully not but it doesn't matter all right again turn my pot over same thing almost like just sprinkle them out a little bit of an area and like i've just said to you don't rush your pellet down don't be don't have your pellet get down first almost like i'm just holding it like two foot off the bottom those micros will take at least 10 seconds at least to get to the bottom it's, it takes a lot longer than you think for them to get down to the bottom so once it's there then i'm just going to like bring my pellet in down behind want it to be the last thing that enters the peg sometimes you know we're like just then it was you know it was very windy and the float was bouncing about and pulling about all over the place so another option can be to pull your rig completely out almost just drop it in like that it's really windy and then just allow the rig to fall naturally into the peg again just to allow it to catch a fish's eye and that way you're not sort of lowering it down and bouncing it about in the wind. I like to lower my rig in, but if it's really windy like that and it's bouncing around all over the place, I don't see the benefit of doing that. I think you're much better off lowering it in. I thought I had a little bite there. Just pick the rig up again. Just trying to almost like flick the rig out past with the wind, let it go all nice and tight, come back into where I've put that bait. One of the most important things you need to remember when you're pellet fishing with your rigs, you want them dotted down to as little as you can get that you can still see the, still see the float. Obviously got to be able to see it, but I've done it black today. And you can just, hopefully the camera can pick it up, but it'll be difficult. It's like a little black dot on the surface. And it's really important. I cannot stress how important it is to shot your floats down still see people not doing it just put another tiny shot on like a 13 or something like that because any little indications on your float that are quick like that you want to be picking up at you know you want to be striking at those bites because that is fish picking up your bait a lot of the time when you're fishing in the margins and you're waiting for one to suck it in then you can have some bristle showing and you can read the bites a little bit more but I think it's really important when you're soft pellet fishing, have that float nicely shotted down. So as soon as a fish sucks that bait in, you're going to see it on the float. Now we've had a couple of indications this chart. There you go, there's another one. Look at that, another bite. That was a quicker bite as well. Just struck my pellet off there. So I've had a couple of indications and I missed a bite. One thing, one, my, one of my golden rules when pellet fishing is if you're missing bites, reduce the amount of feed. In my opinion, missed bites come because there's too many other fish in the peg. Now I know skimmers, you don't tend to miss many bites. So I don't think that was skimmers. I think there's a good chance that's F1. So I'm literally gonna put like 10 micros in my pot. Don't, I, th I feel like when you put too many in, that's when you then that's when you start running the risk of uh, missing bites and we're getting indication so we don't need to put the ground bait in or anything like that we don't need to put anything we don't need to put anything more attractive in we've already got the fish there so literally so drop those 10 micros in hold my rig out of the water for a second make sure those micros get to the bottom then i'm going to flick my rig out and drop it in like i said to you before it's not a race 
you want to make sure that your presentation is absolutely perfect behind those micros coming in. Got him. Look at that. Big difference. That was absolute textbook, that was. Couldn't have, couldn't have happened any better. So, missed a few bites. Had a had an indication there from, or had a few indications. Yeah, go on, give me an elastic stretch. Fantastic. Needed a bit of an elastic stretcher. It's been great. Been great fishing for all these commercial silvers throughout the winter. But I do love when they warm up and just pulling your elastic out a bit, it's great. But we just fed a dozen there instead of the, the 20 odd that we missed the bite from. A bit of pull even. Absolutely great way to start the session. These are the fish. Nice big F1s, golden F1s. Definitely woken up now, up and down the country. So I'm thinking probably best way is to continue like this keeping control of my pellets, whether it's, um, you know, a dozen like it was that time, or maybe a few more if I need it, and just see how we get on, see if those are the fish that we can catch. If we start getting problems, then we'll look to adapt it. But that is a brilliant way to start off any session at this time of year, because it's gonna tell you straight away what's there, what you can catch. And effectively, you need to then keep on top of your bait to suit your bite. So. I'm going to go out with a dozen again and hopefully keep catching some of those. Right, I've been having a brilliant morning's fishing. It's been really interesting on that soft pellet. I've had to mix it up a little bit. Sometimes I've fed like 30 or 40 pellets just because I feel it needs something to kick it back into life. If I think there's a chance of a quick fish, I've been feeding like 10 or a dozen. I've had little spells of small skimmers. I've had spells of really good stamp skimmers, like pound to two pound. And I've probably had six or seven F1s. I've got to be honest, I'd be like, I'd be reluctant to change because I'm catching the fish nearly every single chuck in. So for me, that's a great start. And if I was pleasure fishing, I'd absolutely love it. I'd see no reason to change. In a match, maybe if I wanted to target a few more F1s. So I think what we're gonna do is gonna change to the hard pellet. I wanna show you what I would do. And let's just see how the peg reacts. Let's see if we completely stop catching those skimmers, start catching a few more F1s. I have had a nice carp as well. so. You know, it'll be interesting to see if we catch any quicker or if we catch a more focused species. So I'm just going to take this hook length off because I don't need to make many changes. Just keep it safe there. I'm going to put on a, I've got an 18 kkh here to 012. That's what I'm going to go with. Don't need to go really heavy this time of year. The fish aren't really pulling hard or anything like that. So I do think a light line gets me a, a benefit there and I've actually tied this hook length with a band on and the band just sits off the bottom of the hook so you know it's really close to the hook but it's just off the bottom of the hook there now I really like that for banded pellet fishing particularly if I'm fishing shallow or up in the water but sometimes I find when I'm fishing on the bottom it can be better to have the the hook right next to the uh, pellet itself so what you can do is you can just actually put your hook through the band even though you've hair rigged it you can actually put your hook through the band so you've got the pellet right on the hook and it's a great way of fishing it's caught me a lot of fish so if I just show you there it doesn't the nice thing about it is you don't have to worry about your band coming off or losing your band so let's say i just got a band out of my box and i'd have put it on that existing hook length within two or three fish that band would have just come off and i'd have lost it if i do it with one that i've already hair rigged on 
You can see there, even if that comes off, it's still obviously hairy, so I don't lose the band and I can just re-hook it again. But sometimes when I'm hooking on, fishing on the bottom, I find that to be a brilliant way to get a great hook hold. So I mix it up. Sometimes it's, every day is a little bit different, but just wanted to show you that one because it's a nice little tip. Now, I've been feeding those micros. I'm just going to change. I have, in the last sort of 10 minutes or so, I've been putting the like two or three hard four mils in just to almost start introducing a few. But this time I've just, just put like 10 hard fours in the pot take my time shipping out got my rollers in a good position it's going to ship out there to the same mark and i'm going to do exactly the same as what we were doing before in terms of like just spreading the bait out a little bit and i find the best way to do that is not to turn my pot over to keep it almost the right way up and then give it a little shake like this and that sort of rattles those pellets over a little bit of an area rather than straight down one hole and the same principle applies let those pellets get to the bottom and then flick your rig out so you feel like your pellet is almost the last pellet coming down onto the bottom. Let's see, I would, I would expect less skimmers, but sometimes when they're there and they're feeding well, it can be the case that actually the skimmers will eat an odd hard pellet as well. But I'm hoping for just less of those smaller skimmers. If I do catch one, I'm hoping it'll be a big one. I've got a feeling we might make, wait a bit longer for bites because hard pellets can, can sometimes do that. But I'm hoping that the quality is there for the, is the reward really. And then the same principles apply to, to what I've done with the micros. I'm not gonna feed like 40 hard, hard pellets because I just don't think they're gonna be getting eaten in the same quantities that the micros were. You've got to remember that the micros, I think the fish can suck up 10 or 15 at a time for a start, but I also think that everything's eating them. So little roach, little skimmers, everything is eating those micros. Whereas with a hard four mil pellet, I think a lot of them, I think they, they pick them up. I think they sort of go down and pick them up and try to eat them, but then they realize it's a hard pellet. So they just spit it back out again. So you know, you sort of almost have to tone down your quantities to sort of like, let's say four or five pellets if you're missing a few bites, or, um, you know, a dozen or so pellets if you're trying to make something happen. You, you know, everything sort of almost scaled down feed-wise. So this is my first fish on hard pellets and it just goes to show you can catch skimmers and bream on this as well a bit but it also shows me that maybe those f1s aren't so so sort of like desperate for the hard pellets i mean look he's a good good fish again great great fish they are cracking fish to catch they are look at that um but it does go to show me that the fish aren't instantly tuned into hard pellets because just apologies for that plane going over there. Because if they were, you know, they, they would have sort of come in quickly. I think they love the soft pellets, I do. And I think that by fishing with the soft pellets, when they wanted to come into the peg, I could catch them. Um, and in the meantime, I was catching other fish. But let's just see what happens because I've only sort of, that was still off my first feed. I'm just going to put 12 literally counted them in then 12 uh, hard fours you know that's the sort of top end maybe a few more if it was really solid but you know obviously that bream's eating them so there is they are still getting eaten that's what you have to think about what's getting eaten what is getting eaten in my peg how much bait is there down there same thing again keep my pole up right and just rattle them in lovely just gonna hold my rig out for a second this time so it always helps just to, you know, imagine those pellets going down. You know, I almost want the fish to be settled when my when my bait comes in. Lift up. Just trying to get it to swing it out. Just like that. Perfect. Right, there we go. That's absolutely perfect. I'm never in a rush to don't mind rattling my I like think sometimes the sound of pellets triggers fish to feed if your rig's already in the water. That's where catapulting can work well, but 
And I'm putting them in like that in the in a pot. Definitely seems better just to allow the pellets to almost settle down first. Don't want to be spooking the fish out of the peg, with, don't forget. So definitely, definitely less bites. Just sort of waited probably only about a minute. It wasn't like I was waiting ages, but less indications, less bites, but when it's gone under, it's been an F1 straight away. So I think this, I've just got a funny feeling now that we're in the latter half of the day, this could get better and better potentially for these fish. You know, you've got to remember these F1s are, they've been in here a long time now. There you go, look at these lovely fish. Aren't they beautiful fish, those F1s? You can tell they're not quite in, you know, the warm water mode because they don't put up much of a fight. But look, they are cracking fish. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah, he's taken that one in. Perfect. And that, showed me really that I think hard pellets are going to be a good way to go. I'm just going to change my pellet there. I try to change my pellet every time if I can. It's still, that band is still on the hook now. So I had a perfect hook hold there. I'm just going to move that there. Nice fresh pellet every time. I'm going to do the same again. I'm just going to give it like a, a dozen just feel like it probably wants a few, doesn't want sort of threes and fours just yet. If I start missing bites, then I'll drop it down, but I'm confident that that's right. So out we go again to the mark. It's lovely fishing. Don't forget, you don't have to fish at this length. You can do this shorter if you want to as well. There you go, a few more that time, probably about 15, I reckon. Same thing, I am just gonna let those pellets go down. So, you know, I can't stress how important it is. I don't want to be foul looking any, and I don't want to be, I don't want to be spooking the fish. I want the fish to almost be coming in full of confidence on the bait. Sometimes, I, you know, I've, I've waited like 20, 30 seconds. I know it sounds bizarre, but it, it can be brilliant, you know. Well, I can definitely say that hard pellets has worked for picking out the better fish, the F1s. There's definitely less skimmers. I can't say in all honesty that it's gone any quicker for F1s. It's definitely like I can sit and wait, and when it goes under, it's been an F1. But, you know, I was catching odd F1s on the soft pellets, but I was a lot busier filling the gaps with those lovely skimmers as well. So. It'd be a hard decision. I don't think that I don't think that I would be focusing on hard pellets. You know, I'd probably switch back to soft now and then maybe try again later in the day just to see if I can uh, get those F1s going. Don't get me wrong, it's definitely picked out those those better fish. So it does go to show the way you change and the way you feed your pellets, how much of a difference it can make. As this one tries to go under my platform, that would be a good finish. But I think that with that springtime weather, it shows that not, the F1s aren't always ready for it. They're not always ready to, to feed. They're not always ready to sort of super commit to it. 
So it's nice to catch something in between or nice to give them an easier meal if you like. But if you're getting those problems, if you're getting fish coming into your peg, look at this for a feisty one. You know, if you're getting the smaller fish coming into your peg, you can definitely, definitely pick out these better stamp fish by switching, making that change to the harder pellet. Look at that, he is feisty, isn't he? He was ready for it. There we go, got him. What a feisty F1. And we will call that, as the rain has started to fall, I will call that a session. It's been absolutely brilliant. Look at him, just in the scissors there. Hold him up for you. Those fish, they're averaging like two pound a piece. Beautiful, beautiful fish. Really feisty, F1 small carp. Hard pellets, definitely picking those out, but follow those bits of advice. Choose the right pellets. Keep an open mind to what can happen during your session. And I think this spring, you'll definitely get the best out of it.